I'm Matt Bichar with REIT.com here in New York City for REIT Week 2014. Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Ben Moreland, the President and CEO of Crown Castle International. Ben, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, Matt. Happy to be here. Uh, I think the natural place to start is, is uh, your recent election uh, uh, of REIT status for the company. Was this a difficult decision for the company to make and what ultimately drove that decision? Well, we've operated as a real estate company really since inception almost 20 years ago. Uh, and we thought that the, uh, the REIT uh, corporate organization was the, the right long-term structure for us. The only reason we weren't organized that way from the beginning is because of the accelerated depreciation we generate on the towers generated net operating losses for federal tax purposes. So today we're net income positive, we're starting to consume those NOLs, and we decided to go ahead and make the conversion and, and start with a, 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 about a, a relatively small dividend because we don't have a, a, the need to really pay out a large dividend yet. Ultimately, we'll consume our NOLs and we'll be a very significant, probably 70 to 80 percent payer of AFFO per share uh, in order to, to uh, eliminate the net income in the REIT per the requirements. So we, we start, started small with the, with the dividend structure and we'll lag into it over time, but we've always thought of ourselves as a real estate company and, and, and happy, to be, happy to be a REIT finally. And now the, the average person can, can obviously sort of understand the, the demand for wireless every time they pull up their, sure, their, their smartphone. Every day. Uh, but can you help quantify the amount of infrastructure, you know, be it towers or rooftops, that, that are needed to support all of this? Sure. Well, it's, it's really staggering. Um, today, the wireless carriers in the United States are spending in excess of $34 billion a year improving their networks. Uh, we own 40,000 towers and 12,000 small cell nodes, if you will, that are oftentimes in urban locations like where, where we are in New York on street lights or telephone poles type settings. But we are, the, we are by far and away the largest provider of shared wireless infrastructure, is the terms we use, uh, to the wireless carriers in the U.S. and working very hard to support their needs for all of the data consumption that we're, we're putting on these networks through smartphones and tablets and internet sessions. When we started, we were helping the carriers build out voice networks. And today, it's really broadband internet service, which is uh, much more bandwidth intensive. Um, Cisco estimates, for example, that between now and 2018, the, the current data consumption on these networks will go up by a factor of eightfold between now and 2018. So we feel like we have a very long runway of growth as we all continue to load these networks. Um, with new products, the LTE devices we're all using are large consumers of bandwidth and the carriers then respond by adding additional sites and for us that's co-location, adding additional uh, leases or tenants on existing facilities which is, is really the organic growth story in our business. And, and lastly, the telecom industry is often known as a, a hotbed of merger activity. What, what risk is there to Crown Castle sort of having to navigate that landscape? Well, the, the, to be a competitive carrier, it takes a lot of scale today. And we've seen a significant amount of consolidation in our industry really since the beginning. We've been at this 15 years in the tower business and we've seen consolidation occur almost continuously. And in every one of those cases, as the subscribers of those two companies come together, either one of those single networks is insufficient to manage and, and accommodate the, the current and expected growth of those subscriber bases. So, even if we were to see a Sprint T-Mobile, for example, which we read about frequently it come together, uh, for in our pers from our perspective, those, neither network is available to support the combined of those two, those two subscriber bases, and you'll see significantly more activity. So really, from our perspective, it's around the, the, uh, the ability of those wireless carriers to compete and raise capital effectively, and, uh, and we're an, a very efficient provider of sites in that regard. One of the, one of the key uh, and most compelling uh, components of our business is the whole shared model where um, the carriers have historically outsourced the towers to us on a sale leaseback model, which many of your readers would, would be familiar with. And then we have the ability then to lease up those facilities to additional carriers in the market. So we can often you know, provide a site much, less ex uh, much more cost effectively for a carrier to occupy a site than to own it themselves. And that's a, that's a very compelling model from our perspective and one that's worked quite well. So we're, uh, we're pretty sanguine about consolidation. It's really around uh, the consumer's demand for wireless service and now internet service, which we think uh, is going to continue for a long time. Right. Well, if my two dollars are any, are any indication, you will be in uh, a very, very good demand for a while. So ben, thank you for giving us some insights onto this burgeoning market. Happy to be here. Thanks, Matt. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. Mm -hmm.